is what God does. first want to stop and acknowledge God for allowing me this opportunity once again to stand before his people and bring the truth so his people can be edified. So with that said, I want to, uh, I want to start by engaging you guys. I want to ask a few questions before we get started with today's lesson. I want to ask the, the church, how many of you guys would say that you have an active prayer life? How many of you guys would say you got an active prayer life? Okay. How many of you, when you pray to the Lord, you know without a doubt that he hears and will answer your prayers? Okay. So how many of you only pray during times of need and times of distress. Because right. one thing I've learned is people pray for many different reasons. Some people pray is very formal. You know, it's almost like, um, it, it sounds like you're petitioning maybe Congress or something, you know, and you're uh, at some kind of private affair. And other times, other prayers, you know, people say the same thing over and over, repeatedly, until it becomes just words rolling off your tongue. And still, there are others that pray in such a way that their prayer sounds like God talking to, in the words of like Moses, as one talking to his friend. Right? So, with that said, I... Uh, I've done a lesson on prayer before, and, uh, but I wanted to take a closer look because I wanted to put something on our mind today. I want to take a look at prayer and supplication. And I said and because when we see the two words, they're normally linked together. But what we're going to learn today is that these two are slightly different. So I decided to put together actually a two-part series. This will be part one. Because I wanted, to, uh, <clears throat> I wanted to discover how to make our requests known to God, how to properly communicate with God, and most important, how do we meet the requirements to get our prayers heard. So today... What I'll be covering in the lesson, and today's lesson title is How to Get Your Prayers Heard and Answered, Part 1, Prayer and Supplication. So in today's lesson, you go to the next slide, we'll cover the purpose and principles of prayer and supplication, when and how are prayers and supplication both used, and how God answers our prayers. So without further ado, I want to have my reader, I have a, a biblical uh, encyclopedia, a definition of both prayer and supplication. Prayer is Prayer. Go ahead, brother. Prayer is commonly defined as a solemn request for help or expression of thanks addressed to God or an object of worship, an earnest hope or wish. Also, a religious service, especially a regular one, at which people gather in order to pray together. Example, Friday night prayer meeting. Right, so once again, even here at the Israel of God, we have uh, a Friday night service out of, out of Riverdale. You can log on Fridays, and they have Friday night prayer service, and you have a, a bunch of like-minded people getting together all on one accord. Go ahead with supplication, brother. Supplication is commonly defined as supplication is commonly defined as the action of asking or begging for something earnestly or humbly. Two, 
Today, it is not commonly used, but those that use the King James Bible are familiar <laughs> with the term. Mm -hmm. the Which word, we all do, right? Go ahead. The word supplication comes from a Latin term, supplicare, mm -hmm. which means to plead humbly and has the word supple as its root. Three, the fact that the word supplication has the word supple as its root provides great insight for us in understanding a prayer of supplication. See also plea, petition, entreat, entreat, excuse me. Example, falling on your knees in supplication. Right, so we see that prayer and supplication, so the differences between the two is supplication is a form of prayer, but considered as kneeling down or bending down in which someone makes a humble petition and treats God, cries out, or desires something from God. Meanwhile, prayer, however, can be identified as a sincere thanks or request to God. See, in prayer, there may not be a request made, right, but offering up to God. You yeah. may not ask for something. You may just be giving thanks. Yeah. You know, and for example, a person praying may say, Bless my family. Thanks for saving me. Thanks for my son's life. Yeah. And you know, such like things. But when a person's crying out to God for a cure for his ailing wife, for an injured friend, mm -hmm. see, that's making supplication. Yeah. You know, there's a difference. So with that said, I want to, what I want to do, I want to go to this slide, and I want to show a few more things before we get engaged in the lesson. I want to show, uh, I went to online and I did a study, and it was a, um, a research released by a faith and Christian group, um, Lifeway Christian. They did a research of 1,015 adults ages 18 and over. And uh, they polled them and they said, who's praying and why? They say 55% of America say they pray every day. Right? So I'm going to have the reader, he's going to give you some numbers on how often people say their prayers are answered. Go ahead, brother. How often people say their prayers are answered. 25% say all of the time. 21% mm -hmm. most of the time. 37% mm -hmm. some of the time. 3% mm -hmm. none of the time. And 14% I don't know. So three, only 3% three say no to, none of the time. 25% say all the time, right? 21% says most of the time. So what I wanted to really key in is, you know, what are they praying for? Go to the next slide, brother. Have you ever prayed for? Read the, read the numbers off that one. Have you ever prayed for 41% mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. who mistreat you, 37% your enemies, 21% winning the lottery, 20%... 20 Don't act like that. Don't act like y'all ain't ever prayed to win the lottery. <laughs> Come on. We ain't going to be fake up here, right? That, that thing go to 300 million. Y'all know y'all buy that ticket. Be like, Lord, I'm going to do right. Come on now. Come on around. Come on. That, that's why I made the list. Come on. Go ahead, brother. 20, Top five. 20% 20 success in something you put almost no effort in. 15% mm -hmm. no one to find out. No one to find out a bad thing that you had done. Mm -hmm. All right. So next is one more, and then we're going to get rolling. What, what um, this next one, what does the content of your prayer most often pertain to? All Six, right. Go ahead. 62% gratitude and thanksgiving. Right, so 62% say most of the time they just giving thanks, giving gratitude. As a class, if we say that's true, 62% of your prayers are just giving thanks? Wow, that's powerful. Go ahead. 61% the needs of my family and community. 49% personal guidance in crisis. 47% my health and wellness and 43% confession and forgiveness. For, for confession and forgiveness is only 43%. I figured that would be a little bit higher, you know. Granted, we're in this flesh, we all sin, right? 
Got to ask for forgiveness, so I thought that would be a little bit higher, but the numbers are the numbers, right? So let's get started. Let's go to 1 Kings, the 8th chapter, because today we're going to talk about prayer and supplication, and I really wanted us to be able to distinguish the two. So I want to take a look at an excellent example of supplication. Here in 1 Kings, the 8th chapter, as soon as I get there, I'll give you some background on what's going on here. In 1 Kings, the 18th, the 1 Kings 8, right, David is king. David wants to build a house for God. But God says, no, David, you got too much blood on your hand. You will not build a house for me, but I will allow your son. So what David did, David grabbed all the gold, all the silver. He even had the blueprints, right? And he gave them over to Solomon. And so Solomon had this great big, you know, uh, temple built, a, a house built for God. And he's about to dedicate this house to the Lord. And let's hear this prayer and keep in mind this supplication. 1 Kings 8, pick it up at verse 26, if you would, brother. Go ahead. And now, O God of Israel, let thy word, I pray thee, be verified, which thou spakest unto thy servant David, my father. But will God indeed dwell on earth? Behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. Man, he said the heavens of heavens can't contain you, God. So should I build a house for you? Go ahead, brother. How much less this house that I have built it. Mm -hmm. Yet have thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication, O right. Lord my God. So he say, have first of all, he say, have respect unto my prayer, your servant, and my supplication. Continue to read, brother. O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee today. Right, so he's, he's saying, he's crying, he's begging, he's pleading. You see the difference? Right. Do you guys see the difference? Read it up again. Start at 26? Yes, sir. No, 28. Go 28. ahead. 28. Yet have thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant mm -hmm. and to his supplication, mm -hmm. O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer which thy servant prayeth, before thee today. Right. So that cry, once again, that's that earnest, that, that's that begging, that's that, listen, God, I'm coming with sincerity. I thank you. It's more than just a prayer. It's more than just a prayer. Continue to read, brother. 29. Mm -hmm. That thine eyes may be open toward this house night and day, even toward the place of which thou hast said, my name shall be there that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make toward this place. All right, and learning something on the way to learning something. This is why we pray and face Jerusalem, not the east. You can say the east because we're on the western hemisphere, so of course once we turn, we're facing the east, but we turn to face Jerusalem. Yeah. All right, because once again, God, see, his eyes will always be toward this place. In the words of Brother Boyd, why not hedge your bet? Right. That's why we say stand and face Jerusalem. Read that again. Read 29 again, brother. That thine eyes may be open toward this house night and day. Night and day. His eyes will be forever on this place. Continue to read, brother. Even toward the place of which thou hast said, my name shall be there. Amen. That thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make toward this place. Mm-hmm. And hearken now to the supplication of thy servant. To the what? Supplication and of thy so servant. So he's pleading. He's pleading with the Lord. Go ahead. And of thy people Israel, when they shall pray toward this place, and hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and when thou hearest, forgive. Right, and that's our prayer. See, when we stand and face Jerusalem, and we open up with the Lord's prayer, we're encompassing all that. Yes, Lord. Right. We know his eyes are toward that place because he said it in his word. And one thing the Lord can't do what? He's lie. lie. His word would not come back to, it, to him void. If he say his eyes are on that place, his eyes are on that place. 
And we praying toward that place at the end of this so that he can hear and forgive. Yes, Lord. Because we all got something we need to be forgiven for. Yeah. Forgiven for. So with that said, let's get started. Let's go to Hebrews 11 chapter. I just want to share some light on that because as we go, as we start this lesson, we're going to go through some of the requirements and some of the basic principles to ensure that your prayer is not only heard, but that it's answered. See, these things, these are some of the principles that Jesus laid down, and he also taught his apostles. And if it's good enough for Jesus, if it's good enough for him to teach his apostles, surely it's good enough for us. That's why we want to walk through these. Hebrews 11, verse 6. We're going to take a look at faith. Because when you offer offering up to your God, your petition, your prayer, you got to have some faith behind it. Got to have some faith behind it. Right. 11. Hebrews 11, read verse 6, brother. Go ahead. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Right. So it says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. Impossible. He says, because for you must believe that he is. You got to believe in his word. You got to. See, all things... The, the scripture tell you that all things whatsoever you ask for in prayer, believe and you shall receive them. See, that's why this faith is so important. You've got to believe that he's able and willing to hear that prayer and to follow through with it. But continue to read, brother. Middle of six. Mm -hmm. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Right. And that, that reward is him answering your prayer. Yeah. That it didn't just go up vain. But it says to those that diligently seek him. So can you do this halfway? No, sir. You got to be all in with the Lord. And when he say diligently seek him, that's why we always tell people, the Lord say, when you draw near to me, I draw near to you. Yeah. I'm not going to come find you right. in spite of yourself. That's not how God does things. Make it plain. But you, one thing you'll find, and you'll even if you don't see it in your life, you see somebody get on the track and they really searching for God, and then they end up at a place like this. Yeah. And that's their testimony. They're like, yeah. man, listen, I've been through a lot of things, right? But I knew that wasn't it. Yeah. But man, when I heard this, mm -hmm. I knew automatically that this was God. Yeah. Eight. Because you're reading it directly out of the book. Mm -hmm. See, that's the difference. I can come up here and, and, and remove all of this off this roster and give y'all some good story about how I overcame Satan, blue, blue, blue. Y'all don't know if that's true or not. But one thing you know, everything that I'm saying, you're reading. Mm -hmm. You're interpreting the word just as I am. I'm just leading and guiding you through the scripture. That's all. That's it. Yeah. So let's, let's continue to move. James, the first chapter. See, this faith is so important, but not only with that faith, you got to have that humility. See, because just an example of, of, of just a simple prayer, because I was eating dinner with a, a young man one time, and I went to pray over my food, and he asked me, say, hey, man, can you, uh, can, can, you, can you pray for me? And I mean, I was taken back. You know, I, I really, you know, I, I was looking at him like, are you serious? But he said, yeah, I, I just don't know how to pray. I never prayed. And I said, man, well, listen, just talk to God like you're talking to me. But just address him. You know, you sitting, we, we sitting here sharing a meal. Thank him for that. Right. That you had the money and and, and the means to get something to eat and su to sustain yourself and leave it at that. 
It doesn't have to be long and draw it out. Because see, a lot of people get into that mode. Well, man, I got an uncle. He's a great prayer. And it's intimidating to you. But just like we read earlier, those three, where some people can say the same prayer over and over and they just roll off their tongue. And it means nothing. It's just like the Lord's Prayer. We open up, we say the Lord's Prayer, but a lot of people don't know what each one of those verses mean. Yeah. And we have a lesson, the Lord's Prayer. If you haven't heard it, go here, because that's a prayer you say in every week. Yeah. You should know each and every line of that, of that, of that uh, scripture. Because you're saying, you shouldn't just be saying anything. You should have, especially at this point. With all the information and all the lessons out there, you have a thorough understanding of what it is you're telling God. James 1, pick it up at verse 5, brother, as soon as I get there. Go ahead. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, Nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. All but right. It says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Let him pray to God. See, a lot of people ask me all the time, well, where should I start reading the Bible? How long did it take you to, to know this word? I just don't get it when I read. You got to pray to God for that understanding. Yeah. It's it's the word of God, he, he says that he give it to man liberty. He give it to you freely. See, you don't have to pay this. Yeah. Trust me, it's the reason why Brother Bowie takes the stands that none of us get paid. A, it, it truly brings about an integrity about this spot. Yeah, it does. Because everybody in here know, like Brother Bowie say, you never bought me a cup of coffee. So as I get the word freely, I give it to you freely. And it's an unbridled, right? Don't hold back. So you can't hold back this word. That's what he's trying to tell us, right? And it says, uh, let him ask in faith, not waver. See, that's key. You can't come timid with God. When you come, we're going to read here in a second how you got to come, but you can't come timid. You can't come shy about this because the most important part about it is what? You got to believe. You got to have faith. Or why are you sending up this petition? Continue to read, brother. Verse 7. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Right. So... If we doubt God's ability to provide, then why should God answer us? Think about that. If we're already doubting in our mind, why should he answer us? To prove his point? No, he wants to deal with the believing and the faithful. But let's go. Let's keep it moving. Let's go to Hebrews 4. Let me show you how God expects us to come before him. See, you got to have the right approach when you're dealing with this God of Israel. See, that's why a lot of people, a lot of people say they don't like that God of the Old Testament. But once you get them to understand that the God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament, that's hard for them to believe. Wait a minute, you mean that was Jesus who drowned an entire world? All but eight souls? Hebrews 4, pick it up at verse 12, brother. Go ahead. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Right. It's a discerner of the, of, of the intents of the, of the heart. See, it's going to tell you exactly what's on your mind, right? Because as a man speaketh, so is he, right? Yeah. 
That's why this word, that's why it cuts so, and especially around this time of year. I've had more conversations in the last two weeks about, hey, you know, I just don't get the invite anymore. I'm an outcast. I'm a black sheet of the family. That's how you know God's word is true. Yeah. Because it is written. God didn't tell you. We all like to think when we run to our family with this good word that they're just going to embrace us and be like, man, where, where did you find this? Is, is there <laughs> more of it? Right. For a lot of people, that's very few. Yeah. But the scripture tells us, hey, this word is, 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 is sharp. It's powerful. Like a two-edged sword. And see, it's like a two-edged sword because it's going to cut you both what? Coming and going. It may cut the person you're talking to, but guess what? It's just like when I be putting this lesson together. Like all the teachers say, man, we bleed all over these pages. It's scriptures. I be like, you know, and I'm studying. I'm thinking, man, I wasn't even in, you know, Psalms. Why, why, why God had the pages stop here? You know, but got to put it in the lesson, even though it's, it's pricking me at the heart. See, but that's that two-edged sword. It's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. But continue to read. Skip down to verse 15, brother. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, right. yet without sin. Right. So Christ was tempted in all points. So we can't stand before him and say, well, you, didn't, you, you, you don't understand. I was tempted in all points, but sin not. Continue to read, brother. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Right, so how is the scripture telling us that we must come before God? Boldly. But see, let's not get it twisted. That's not arrogant. Right. That's not arrogant. Just bold confidence because you know you're doing the right thing. You know he's sitting on the right hand of the Father waiting, waiting. And the scripture says to obtain mercy and grace in the time of need. That's why you're going to come boldly because at some point you're going to need this mercy and you're going to need this grace. See, because that mercy is something you've done that you should be punished for. But guess what? I'm going to just let them grow a little bit. You know, I still may give them a little spanking, but guess what? It may not be the second death. See, that's that, that's that, that's that mercy. Something you deserve to be punished for. You know, we do it as parents. You're like, you know what? I should get you right now. Yeah. <laughs> I should. I should get you right now, but I'm going to let you make it. All right, so we see that Christ is requiring us to come bold with our prayers. Can't come timid, because if you don't believe, watch the answer. Yeah. Let's continue to move. James, the fifth chapter. See, because this is important for me and my elders. This James, the fifth chapter, and even for you and your loved ones. As I said earlier, and, 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 and we'll teach on it in the second half more about fasting. But me and the elders, when we take somebody and we're anointing them, we, we go to James, the fifth chapter, or we may use Psalms 103. And uh, this is the chapter we come through, we come to because for two things. It's not only drawing from your elders and your leadership, but it's also calling upon you to display some faith. See, because Romans tell us that every man has been given a measure of faith. God's trying to get you to exercise it. Listen at this, James 5. Pick it up at verse 13, brother. Go ahead. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. So who should start praying first? Those that are afflicted. 
See, because a lot of people run us and, okay, lay hands on us. But you know one of the first things we do? We bag up and say, when we read this, we say, okay, now offer your petition to God. And once you're finished, then we'll intercede on your behalf. But the faith starts with you. You have to have the belief that, you know what? I'm sitting here amongst the men that God has appointed to be over me at this time, right? Lord, I am coming to you either in prayer or in supplication for whatever I desire. But continue to read, brother. Uh, end of 13. Mm -hmm. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Mm -hmm. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with the oil, excuse me, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And that's just what we do. We're going to bring that oil out, we're going to anoint you, and we're going to anoint you in the name of the Lord. Continue to read, brother. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. So the prayer of the faith is going to heal the sick. you got to believe this, though. you got to believe it. And I'm telling you, and you can talk to any one of these elders, we've seen it time time after time. Somebody comes for healing, they're struggling with it, they're going to have surgery on this, and they come and give us the testimony, and, and we tell them, hey, that's great. Do you want to edify the body? Because, see, what we have to understand is that's how God gets the glory. Right. Because, see, somebody's in doubt. Somebody thinks God is still not in the healing business. Right. But it's not until sickness come up on you and he deliver you through, and you got witnesses who seen that. But you know what some of us do? He deliver us through, and we say, you know what? Okay. I did that. I chose the right doctor. Right. You know, the medicine worked. You know, that, that last round of chemotherapy knocked it out. I'm just being honest. We hear it all the time. And not that God didn't work through other men, but we can't lose focus on where the, 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 the honor and the glory truly go. Yeah. And that's to God. All things, all things are led and guided by him. Yeah. Even evil. Mm -hmm. See, continue to read, brother. 15. Mm -hmm. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, mm -hmm. and the Lord shall raise them up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Right. So that prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That's why you got to have a team of people laying hands on you who are trying to walk this thing to the best of their ability. We still, men, we still fall short. Right? But we are making an honest approach to do this right so when we lay hands on you, that healing, that request can be answered. That's why you can't live your life just any old kind of way. Right. Because trust me, you're the only Jesus a lot of people know. Mm -hmm. And when they call you and say, man, listen, my mother's sick. I know you're spiritual. Can you, can you come pray for her? And you're sitting up there thinking, I ain't right. You don't want me in there praying over your mother. That's not the approach for a man or woman who's trying to live this thing in spirit and truth. You should be like, yes, you got some oil? Because mm -hmm. it didn't say that it had to be the pastor. Yeah, you call for the elder of the church, but I can reach you where, hey, you can anoint yourself. Yeah. And you should. You should be at this point, you should have enough faith to where, hey, listen, you can't get down here to the church. Sickness coming on, you should be putting on and, and anointing yourself, praying and confessing and believing. You, know, you may not can get down here. You may not can get down here. But let's continue to move. So we looked at a little faith, a little humility. Let's look at another one of these requirements. And for this one, it's a struggle for a lot of women. The head covering. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 11. Because people will tell you, oh, it's, it's not required. But what you're going to show them is, hey, if you want that prayer, 
To be heard? Oh, it's required. And I can read that to you. This is not something I'm just saying. I can read that to you. You wondering why your prayer coming up short? Or you taking these steps? Because, see, one thing we know about the word of God, you can't go around. Right. You got to go through the door, right? right? Have you ever entered in a house the right way? The right way without going through the door. You can come in through the window, right? But then at that point, hey, you might be mistaken for a thief and a robber. We know what the Lord say about thief and robbers, right? 1 Corinthians 11. Pick it up at verse 1, brother. Let's go ahead. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. So listen to Paul. Paul say, be a follower of me. Because if one thing, if you do that, if you be a follower of me, you're going to be okay because I'm a follower of Christ. Right. That's what he's telling these Corinthians. Go ahead. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Right. So Paul telling these Corinthians, hey, I didn't deliver the law, these ordinances to you. Now just do them. Continue to read, brother. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Right. Listen, this, 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 we don't have to move past this scripture to, for it to start being conflicting with the world. You know, I wouldn't tell you, hey, I make my own money. Ain't nobody over me. I pay my own bills. That may be true. But, but just like the scripture says, these or the ordinance. These are what Paul is teaching the Corinthians on how to get right. And he said the order is what? God, Jesus, man, woman. And we explain it all the time. Okay, well, woman say, well, I don't have a husband. Okay, well, then it's God, Jesus, and then you. That's the order. But everybody has a head just like you have man as your head. Man has God as his head. And he should be operating in that manner. That's why it shouldn't be a problem for um, a, 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 a woman to follow or be submissive to a righteous man. Because his order should be, you know, uh, ordered from the Lord. It shouldn't be a problem. I know my, my husband is telling me what thus said the Lord for both of us. Continue to read, brother. For every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, Dishonoreth his head. Right, so I want to stop there for, because I definitely want to drive this one home. It says, every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Because a lot of times, this is where you have to start showing this scripture. Because people like to use hair. Right? So you can't, it can't be hair for one and hair not for the other. So if it's, if it's uh, dishonorable for me, to have hair on my head while I'm praying that dishonors God, then every man in here, what, needs to have one of these. If we're talking about hair. If we're, if we're using hair, everybody, when they get ready to pray, every male should look like this, right? If we're talking hair. Because sometimes when we're, well, well, you know, I've always been taught my, my hair is my cover. I mean, come on. That's almost an absolute that, you know, most women have hair. So why would Paul even be addressing the Corinthians with this? Good point. He could have grabbed that one little isolated situation over there and, and taught her something. No, he's addressing the church. These are what he's trying to put in place because, like he said, follow me because I follow Christ. The revelation I got is from Christ. That's good teaching. Continue to read, brother. Verse 5. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head, for that is, excuse me, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. Mm -hmm. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. Right. So it says every woman praying or prophesying. So if you want that prayer to be heard, you need to be covered. Whether you at work, school, just praying over your meal. I think it's real cut and dry. Continue to read, brother. Seven. Oh, I, I take that back. There is an option. 
He said, if you don't want to be covered, be shaven. You know, grab you one of them Mach 3s that, that Walmart won't like $20 for three of them and just go to town. <laughs> you know what? And, and for some people, that's an option today, right? But we just read them what thus said the Lord. Verse 7, brother, go ahead. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. Right, so a man should care. And, and even most society teach you, when a man, w whether he has on a hat or whatever, mo most time he goes in a public place, the first thing he does is remove his hat. Right. Well, men may not have that much respect anymore, but I remember, you know, your grandfather, whatever, come over soon. It could be a regular home. As soon as he, he crossed the uh, uh, threshold, take his hat. Hey, go put my hat somewhere. Yeah. Right? So somebody was reading something, wasn't it? Right. But see, this also has a spiritual meaning. And see, that's what um, men and even women, this is, this is the message that you relay over to people who are struggling with this. This is both a physical and has a spiritual meaning. Verse 10, brother, go ahead. For this cause ought not the woman to have power on her head, because of the angels. Right, because of the angels that was kicked out. Just drawing that parallel from Eve in the garden when Satan approached her and her covering wasn't there. See, she wasn't covered when Satan approached her. And she was exposed to a spirit being that, once again, she can't entertain. And that's what you share with those who don't have an understanding. When you open yourself up and you're uncovered, you're dealing with a force that, once again, you can't entertain. Nah. This, we're going to read later in the scriptures, this man can hold another angel up for yeah. three weeks. Yeah. So how does a flesh and blood being stand a chance? Right. When God's giving you the blueprint on what to do. So all you got to do is read it, comprehend it, and obey it. Yes, sir. Let's continue to move. The next point, or the next requirement, praying to the Father in Jesus' name. Right? Because, see, it's almost become uh, a rite of passage now. You know, nobody wants to say the name. Right. You know, it's the most high this, it's the most high that, which is nothing wrong with that title. See, but I know from just listening to that conversation, that they try to hide behind the most high. But if they knew that the most high was actually Jesus, <laughs> see, the most high is Jesus. See, I say it all the time. Jesus carries all the titles of the Father. Yep. It's just Father doesn't carry all the titles of Jesus. Yep. So when you read Back in, in uh, Exodus and Deuteronomy, he's talking about the most, that's talking about Jesus. And I'm not going to teach that today, but we're, we're going to bring some, some uh, precepts out maybe in, 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 in another lesson. But let's look at this, this third requirement. Praying to the Father in Jesus' name. Luke, the 11th chapter. Pick it up at verse 1, brother. Go ahead. And it came to pass that as he was praying, in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Right, so John taught his disciples to pray, and they seen Jesus all praying, and they said, Jesus, teach us to pray, as John has taught his disciples to pray. And John had disciples, he had followers, you know, many. But what did Jesus tell them? Go ahead, brother. Two. And he said unto them, when ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven. Say what? Our Father, which art in heaven. Always addressing the Father first. And we're going to learn, we're gonna, we're gonna learn why, but go ahead. Hallowed be thy name. Mm -hmm. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Right. So I know it sounds a little different because we always read the Lord's Prayer out of Matthew. But 
Once again, he's saying, hey, you got to acknowledge the father first. So let, let's get one more account. Let's get a second account. And let's, let's look at Paul speaking to the Ephesians. Because he's going to teach him this, this exact same thing. Ephesians, the fifth chapter. We're going to read one verse here. And then we're going to go and read why. Ephesians 5. Pick it up at verse 20, brother. Paul explaining to the Ephesians. Go ahead. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right, so even Paul had that understanding. Yeah. And that's what he's enlightened the Ephesians on. Always give thanks to God the Father through Jesus Christ. Let's go to John, the 14th chapter. John 14, John 14, and see, John 14, read verse just 6, brother, just verse 6. Go ahead. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You see that? See, because a lot of people, you know, like to spit on Jesus, but he said, hey, you can't even come to the Father, but by me. Once again, I'm that door. I'm the one you got to go through. Right. I'm the one you got to go through if you want your prayers heard and answered. Let's continue to move. Let's go to Romans, the 8th chapter. Because this is, this is why, and this is why you want Jesus, you want to go through Jesus to get to the Father. Romans 8. Pick it up at verse 34, brother. Go ahead. Who is he that condemneth? Mm-hmm. It is Christ that died, yeah, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Right, so that's why it's so important to pray to Jesus, right, to pray to the Father in Jesus' name, because you need Jesus there as that intercessor, that mediator between you and God. Yeah. See, what Jesus does, Jesus grabs your prayer, cleans it up, and then presents it to the Father. Right. If it's a worthy prayer. Right. You know, because Jesus also talks about being worthy to take your words upon his lips. Not every prayer we know that you pray is received, is received uh, up to the Father. Because a lot of people won't even acknowledge Jesus. So where do you think that prayer is going? Nowhere. Stopping right there. You might as well not even, you might well keep it in your mind. So with that said, let's look at another one. Look at another requirement. Keeping other commandments. Hmm. You know this one started huge fights, right? Cub Scout got laws, Boy Scout got laws, but the creator of heaven and earth <coughs> has no laws. Do, do whatever you feel. Serve God your way. You wouldn't live in a neighborhood like that. You wouldn't go to a church like that. You wouldn't send your kids to a school like that. But you want or you teach people to believe that the law is done away with. When you really th sit back and think about that statement, you know, I don't know. 1 John 3. 1 John 3, we're going to read verse 22, brother. Go ahead. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Right, so he says, so whatever you pray for, you receive of him. Go ahead. Because we keep his commandments. Because we keep what? We keep his commandments. Amen, go ahead. And do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Praise the Lord. Because, see, some things may not just be spelled out 1 through 10. But you know 
what would be pleasing in his sight. Yeah. Right? Showing a little charity, right? right? You may see your fellow man cold, hungry. You think to yourself, well, you know, hey, should I just get in my car and ignore it? But you know that once again, Lord say, hey, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. He said, when did we do this unto you, Lord? He said, when you did it to the least. So those things that are pleasing in his sight, those are covered too. And he rewards you for that. Because, see, you're going to get to a point, you may not be in that situation, but you're going to be in a point where you're going to need something. And you don't want that prayer to fall on deaf ears. Okay? Let's continue to move. Just like in um, Hebrews 4, you know, it's talked about coming boldly. And James 1, he said, he gives freely. He doesn't hold it back. That's because you understand about keeping uh, the law. That's why you can come boldly because you're like, Lord, I'm trying to do this thing right. Yeah. Even when I make a little mistake, I repent and get back up. Right. Right. So what about those who don't believe in keeping other commandments? See, because this is the other side of it that you have to show. Proverbs 28 and 9. Proverbs 28 and 9. And see, and this, is, this is one of those things you share also. You, somebody said, man, you know, I've been praying for this and praying for this. That's why I don't believe God. He don't ever answer me. You know, I've been praying for this job. I got all the qualifications. Why haven't this job landed in my lap? I've been praying for this. Maybe you haven't been walking in the commandments. Maybe you don't believe in keeping other commandments. Proverbs 28, verse 9, brother, go ahead. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law. Because some people don't even want to hear when you start talking about the law. Get keeping it. Man, get away from me with that law. That was nailed to the cross. We under grace. We under new dispensation. If you hadn't heard it, you will hear it. Continue to read. Even his prayer shall be an abomination. Scripture tells you, even your prayer is going to be an abomination. Mm. If you can't do what it is that I'm asking you to do by keeping these commandments, keep your prayer because it's an abomination to me. Mm. Harsh words, but words of God. Let's go to Isaiah the 59th chapter. And he's going to tell you why. It's a good thing about God. He always is, is here, and he'll always elaborate just a little bit more. I'll tell you why these commandments are so powerful. It brings about righteousness. Isaiah 59. Pick it up at verse 1, brother. Go ahead. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither is neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Right. Always remember that. The Lord's hand is not short to where he can't save. Some things that you go through, he meant for you to go through them. Yeah. Right? I told y'all before, I, when I watched the news one time, this lady was like, you know, the tornado went through Oklahoma, and her statement was, there was a God, how did he let this happen? Oh, I say, my hand's not short. I know exactly why it happened. Because sometimes I need to get y'all attention. Sometimes I need to reveal my power. Sometimes I need to show y'all who's in control. Now, continue to read. Two, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God. See, God saying your sins is what's drawing the division between me and you. I'm not going to be around you and you constantly breaking my law. You constantly won't take heed to my word. I'm going to separate myself from you. So now you're totally exposed. 
we always read when the Lord say, he keep his protective hedges around you, like in a situation with Job. He says, hey, why wouldn't he serve you? He got protective hedges all around him. See, we got those same protective hedges around us. But they can be removed. Keep disobeying his law. He said that sin separates us from him. So the farther you, way to, you get away from that law, the farther way you get away from God. It's basically what he's telling you. Continue to read, brother. Middle of two. Mm -hmm. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Right. Amen. Let's continue to move. Let's look at the last requirement because we know that the Lord tell you that the wages for sin is death. That's why you don't want that big, huge gap between you and the Lord because of sin. Thank you for joining us here at the Israel of God, Dallas. We look forward to seeing you again.